Hey guys and girls, Board now back with you on this video. I'm going to be talking about Lady in the Lake, episode 3, called I was the first to see her dead, you were the last to see her alive. Full spoilers, once again guys, from the start of this review. And I've got similar feelings to episode from last week. I was much more positive on the first one. Again, it's not that episode two was, like, terrible. Like, it wasn't the sort of episode where it made me want to, like, give up and not watch any more of the show. There was definitely things in it I liked. But, yeah, I did feel it was a little bit more messy. They are trying to do a little too much, like, a little too many characters or a little too many, like, subplots and... It just feels like they're trying to cram it all in and, and it's not quite all coming together and as a result there are sort of spells where I'm phasing out a little bit of the drama. A good example of what I'm talking about is Reggie who is the son of Mr Gordon, the nightclub owner. He gets a bit more of a plot this episode because he was the one who gave Cleo the assignment to go to like the drug dealer's house. But what's revealed in this episode is that he actually lied to her about his father ordering her to do that. It was actually his idea and he gives her a bit of a flimsy excuse and it's something where he wanted to take the heat off himself. But there's a scene in this episode where he, with him and his father, Mr. Gordon, where... It seems like he wants a bigger role in the club, Reggie does, and he wants to maybe be a performer. He mentions to his dad about how he knows about Slappy getting like a plot prime time sort of big slot. A little bit jealous there. He feels like his father is giving this other guy all the attention. Wishy-washy excuse about how he, he doesn't feel he's ready. Just an example, it, it does feel like another character who we maybe don't need another character having more plot. I'm not sure, like, the stuff with him and his father was that interesting anyway. It felt a little bit cliche. In episode 2, I was actually more into the Cleo plot than I was the Maddie plot. It's reversed this time. I was actually more interested in Maddie's plot. The plot in this episode is that she goes back to the journalist... And she's angling for a job with him, or at least to get a story. And part of this we find out later is that she's still trying to, like, scramble money together to pay the rent for the month. And she's been in contact with Stefan, who's the mentally challenged pet store guy who they arrested last week. He's been, she's, she's in contact and that could be a story. Also, she says it could be a story if they speak to the mother the mother of the victim, that is, and sort of wants the journalist Bobby's name is to to give her some help, to help her get in to see, like, the coroner and, you know, to try and build up a story. Oh, you're not really qualified, you don't have any previous experiences. and But again, it's sort of showing how he's being quite dismissive of her, probably because she is a woman and he's not taking her seriously, he's distracted by other things going on around him. and But I like this stuff in the episode with Maddie because... It's a good way of showing how she is invested in this. And again, another side to her being quite ambitious and not wanting to settle for the mundane, like, housewife type life or just like the single life. Then she actually wants a proper career and she actually wants to pursue things and be quite ambitious and, and not just take the easy kind of roles in life. So it's a good sort of character thing for her in the episode and eventually later on because she writes the letter to Stefan he gets contacted by the mental institution and they say Stefan wants to see you and that's how the episode actually ends so Maddie goes to see him and we're gonna pick up with that in episode four but also then she's reaching out to the mother once again, the mother of the victim, and later on and says she's got a reply from Stefan and like she's been in contact with the mother. Again at first, like she says to him, well this is enough to give me a story at least. 
And once again, he's, he's pretty dismissive of it. Like, he's not convinced and, and tries to, like, push her away. But then she threatens... She calls his bluff, basically. She threatens to go to, like, the other big newspapers with the story. And that's when he has a change of heart. It's like, OK, maybe we can work together. And so there's a scene where he takes her to, like, the doctor or the coroner to, to give her a little bit more background on... What, the results of like the autopsy on on this girl, and it does say that apparently she was raped, or then there was an attempted rape at least, like in the struggle and when she was killed. And there's just certain things in there which makes Maddie think that well, was Stefan really the guy? At least give her this like one story, and that gives her like the paycheck that she needs to pay that month's rent character who has been given a bit of a shaft is the judith character the the mickey mad madison character and and that's a disappointment because as i said i do quite like that actress and i see a lot of potential with her and maddie their storyline and it does feel like it's sort of shoved a little bit to the side in this episode now I'm guessing there will still be more of them and more to come because it does seem like they're heading in that direction. But the one big scene with them in this episode is when they're in, like, the store. The cops comes in, like, one of the superiors in the police force. And we see that he's a little bit of a sleazebag because he starts hitting on on Judith, and that's before Maddie walks in. He then appears to turn his attention towards her, and it's a bit of a joke between the, the two ladies when he leaves, because, the, like, Maddie says, well, he was clearly flirting with you, and and she sort of shoes out. Of no, no, I think he was. And I think that's the thing. I think he probably was with both of them, but it's that idea of as soon as Maddie walked in, because she's the older woman and maybe a, a little bit more respected him then and it was a bit like okay I, I don't want her to think I'm flirting with this much younger like woman he shows Judith the paychecks like hey I've got this month's rent that kind of thing and so that's their main scene you don't really see much else of Judith in this episode she and her son who once again it continues to be like a little shit and continues to be probably the most boring character in the show and he, he's just a bit too one note that's the problem with him now there's an interesting bit before maddie goes to see him a night with this this cop the african-american cop who she's been seeing one of the best scenes in the episode is that when they do a contrast scene between Maddie and Cleo. So Cleo's in the club and you've got the performer up on stage and it's this really talented performer who's singer who's been making a real impact. It's her last night at the club performing because she's going off to bigger things. She's going off to France. So it's her last performance and we cut between the two scenes where Cleo is like entranced by this and Cleo just lets go and is on the dance floor dancing a lot, like really getting into it. Feels she can relax and just lose herself on the dance floor. And you cut in between the two scenes. So you've got her on the dance floor and you've got Maddie who gets a visit from the cop and like having passionate sex. And, and so it's a nice sort of like link up between the two where in different ways they are both like finding a release and finding a, a little bit of a thrill but anyway the next day after the cop has left maddie is like cleaning up the apartment and what i like about that is you could read it as either of two things you could read it as the maddie's still a little bit uneasy about seeing like an african-american cop or she's just a little bit embarrassed that she's having this affair when technically she is still married because the sun is coming round, which some people would say. It. Like, in a way, it might be a bit of both. It, it's probably that she doesn't want to let on to the sun that she's been, like, spending the night with someone else. In fact, it probably is that because later on, things come to a head and we find out that the sun knows anyway 
So it probably is that because then that kind of pays that off later on. But it, it's just an interesting little detail that you could read the scene as either way. You could read it as a little bit of casual racism from Maddie than she's embarrassed by the idea of being with this guy or or it could just be that literally she wants the, the room to be like tidy and clean. Then it's just awful again and I know that in some ways it's understandable many more interesting to watch and and he is especially a little shit in this episode like he is actually being malicious so I think that's what makes me have like less sympathy because Maddie is trying to encourage him joke from him at one point where <laughs> it's this idea of like he, he's looking at potential universities and and he makes this crack about how like he almost wants to go to university as a way so that he he doesn't get called up <laughs> for like service there's more important reasons to to study than just that it's it's good to have a passion for things and again i think this links quite well to her plot with like the journalism her being like a good mother and, and taking an interest in his life and he just throws it right back in her face like he's just a little shit at her apartment and once again a, a little bit of like he's running down where she lives now and a little bit of casual racism in there and once again it's typical of the attitudes at the time and stuff and there's difference between what makes for good dialogue in a movie or in a tv show and what makes for good dialogue in a in a book in a novel and this comes from a novel and so certain scenes in this in this show definitely stand out as being yeah you can definitely tell they've come off the page and they haven't really adapted them for this series that work in a book but maybe don't always work when you put it on screen or on tv and i think there's some lines of dialogue between the son and maddie in in this scene which definitely feel a little bit like that one reaction from natalie portman and one delivery in this scene with the son which i think is a bit weaker like it's it's sort of her only like weak moment of acting on the show but I don't really blame her. I think it's more just the way the scene is, the way the scene's put together. But they're getting into this fight and she keeps calling the father Milton. And that's important because of what she's about to say and like reveal. And the son is getting her on onto about that, about calling him Milton. And once again, it, it comes back to that theme a little bit than we've heard from Cleo, this idea of like, you are kind of stripped of your title it just becomes Milton because Maddie has decided she wants to leave him and it's like she's determined that was my life then I'm moving on saying your father and the reason she's not saying his father is because she suddenly blurts out in the middle of this argument between the two of them he's not your father and then she reacts and it's like oh no sorry I didn't mean that and I think he can tell that she did so it does appear as so like it's the truth in the scene not that I want to give this character too much credit because I think he is a terrible and annoying character but it's actually quite a nice sentiment the way he reacts and says he doesn't care if he's my father or not he is a father he's the only father i've known and that's enough for me and and maddie to be fair is like i understand that he revealed the noah who I, i'll still call him noah because i can't remember the character's name but it's revealed that he actually knows about the affair because the little shit read maddie's diary behind her back just that one line delivery from portman when they were having the fight and she came up with he's not your father that just felt a little bit stilted a little bit weak but again I, i'm probably not going to blame her so much the plot we start off with a flashback from 1948 so cleo is a young girl and she overhears her dad and her mother fighting and it turns out that mr gordon has been in their lives for a long time because 
her father worked for him as well. Cute scene, but also quite a scary one where we f- we see that Cleo wants to be a singer. She has, she has. So the ambition dates all the way back to when she was quite a young kid. And it's a scene in the bathroom with the father and the father's play acting along and like pretending to play like a saxophone and she's like singing and doing a whole performance and that's the thing as I said it's quite a sweet scene on the one hand but it's also really sad because once again it's it's painting the picture for her path in the future how a bit like the father she's going to be dragged into this life and it's going to put her in danger which of course happened and she's on the phone to I think it must be Reggie and Reggie says to her not to say anything to Mr Gordon just keep your head down and it's all for the best and that makes sense later on just to wrap up the Reggie stuff this episode by the end of the episode Cleo figures out then Reggie lied about the whole thing about not telling his father she uses this to blackmail him because she finds out that he's been doing some under the books gambling secret ledger with with a horse's name on so it's a horse who is hotly tipped to win like a big race and like the massive favor of the race so Cleo blackmails Reggie she says if you give me the name of the on the, of the horse then I won't reveal to your dad. Then then you lied about the whole thing. And, and the way she says it is, it's my opportunity. Like, this horse is such a nailed-on favourite than I can't really lose, is the way she puts it. So she sees that as an opportunity to get out of this life once and for all. She blackmails Reggie to get this opportunity. Probably the best scene with Cleo in this episode, apart from the stuff on the dance floor, which I thought was very well done. But the scene after that stuff, actually, because... She gets her, she's she's a bit drunk, she gets herself into a bit of a state, she ends up making the scene, and Slappy takes her away, like takes her out of the club, back home to, to sort of save her. And I think this is quite a good scene, because it, it does show that Slappy, for all his faults and what have you, does actually care about her, like. He is quite tender in this scene. He he takes her back and she's all drunk and it's like she's quite close actually to telling him what exactly happened. Venting him a little bit because now he's being given this opportunity in the club and is starting to like make a name for himself and she's still toiling away and she's struggling. A little bit of a jerk in one moment where he says, well, it's not my fault. You're throwing your dreams away. I'm not doing anything wrong, just like living my dreams and things like that. He doesn't come off great in that, but for most of the scene, he's actually pretty good and, and he does seem to like care about her and just the fact that he took her out of the club at that point and got her away from like the stuff when she was making a, a bit too much of a scene and stuff. Like I think that sort of shows that he does care about her on some level. And he is quite tender in this scene. Seeing seductive in that scene, like she's trying to like for, sort of force sex on him. And it's like, yeah, come on, let's do it. Drunk and she's emotional. And he, yeah, he doesn't do it. Like he says, no, that this isn't right. And he, he sort of settles her down later. And once again, the actress is doing a, a really good job. Moses Ingram, like... Her having this emotional breakdown in the scene, you can tell she's a really good actress. She does a great job. Stuff with flashbacks to her past because we find out that at one point there was an incident with her son, Teddy. Blended originally into how deeply religious and traditional her parents are, her father especially, and how they're trying to push religion on her and the son. They're like especially people who were religious sort of did believe that god could like heal people and stuff like that so they're trying to push that onto them and we once again see how cleo tries to rebel against that stuff and tries to escape that stuff and again it it paints quite a clear picture of 
she'd been like trying to run from this stuff all her life. Scenes I did think were a bit melodramatic and there's a couple of scenes in this episode and there have been some scenes so far which have been like a bit too over the top and melodramatic and this was another one, this flashback scene. A woman who's running for the re-elected and she's the one who Cleo wanted to get a job with and we find out in this episode that there was an attempt on her life and it turns out that the attempt on her life was from the people in the car with Cleo, like an American cop. We see him arrest someone who's like one of the people involved and he then finds out that Cleo's involved. So he goes to Cleo and, and questions her about like giving him the other names and this is quite a good scene actually because he says to Cleo if you give me the names I'll keep keep your name out of it like it doesn't have to go any further and and I quite like this because he's been he realizes because he says at one point I know who's behind this I know Mr Gordon is is your boss and everything so you you're, you're sort of doing his bidding so I quite like that he's sympathetic to her plight and how she wasn't really the aggressor in all this. Like she was just the driver and the names and, and that's kind of that. But so I thought that was quite a good scene for that character for the for the cop because it, it does show that he is quite sympathetic and he he recognizes things. It's very hit and miss this episode, like the last episode, so yeah, I'm kind of middling on this show at the moment, but that's episode three. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm not sure how many more I'll, I'll keep on with. It, it does depend, but I'll probably give episode four a go and see where we lead. But as I said, the main problem is it does seem that they are trying too much at the moment. Too many characters, too much. And there are certain things about it that are a bit too on the nose. Frustrating is definitely a good word because the, like, there's a lot of potential to this show. And, and there's definitely really good things in it. But it's not quite hitting all synodas as as I was hoping, really. But that's episode three of Lady in the Lake. Let me know your thoughts. Like and subscribe as always. And I'll see you guys again soon. Goodbye.